Ella lovelies. All right, now I am doing something kind of new. I've done first impressions on stuff, but never a lot of stuff. I'm complaining in this Ulta bag. I have a lot of stuff I did not necessarily get from Ulta. But this is my first full face-ish first impressions. No. For primer, I did not grab a new one because my new one I've actually used a bunch. It is good, but since the foundation that I am going to be trying is a stick foundation and is more like cream based, kind of in a sense acting the same as like cream paints and whatnot, I am going to use one that I've used before. This is the e.l.f. Poreless Primer. And I have found that when one does any sort of like cream face paint thing or puts a cream and not necessarily liquid product on the face, it's a lot easier to just do a poreless sort of primer for the base. Now you may notice I have my eyebrows done because I was running around today with no makeup minus my eyebrows. But the thing I use for my eyebrows is something I have used for many, many moons, and that is just some NYX eyeshadow. So, the foundation that I am trying is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick Foundation. No, a lovely gentleman. It also helped me shade match. This is in the shade Alabaster. And I'm excited to see what this does. Now, my face is both clean and moisturized, and I put my skincare on, so there is that. Let's see how this matches. Okay, we look a little pale. This could be interesting. Oh, oh, oh my. Oh, well, maybe not. Oh, well, maybe. I got used to my Kat Von D one, and it looks darker when you put it on, but it matches when you don't. Oh, my lord. I can maybe make this work. If not, I will exchange it for the porcelain. I have not worked with stick foundation before, so this could be interesting. Blend it down my neck. Wondering why I have purple spots on my neck. I washed my hair a little bit ago and I used my overtones, so I got a little bit of it on me. I'm going to blend this out with my beauty blender that I always use to apply my foundation with. See how this blends out? Oh lord. Yeah, this this is looking very pale. I I am a very pale human, but this this is looking. I might be able to make this work, but. This is also very wanting to stay where I put it. And I don't know if that is just an interesting stick foundation because I've never really been one to use it. I, the only experience I have is when I did Josh's Jace makeup because stick foundation was the only thing that would stick to his skin. And it was the NYX version. This doesn't look that bad blended out, but I don't know y'all. I don't know. It's surprisingly very, very, very thin coverage. I don't know if I like that. I'm, I'm generally not one for, okay, I'm gonna start using some rubby motions. I'm not really one for cake face. Y'all know that. But this is a little, come on now, blend with me. This is a little absurd. Okay, that blended out okay, but that, that did not. I possibly may need to use some sort of foundation brush for this. That is possible, however, 
All my foundation brushes are covered in face paint. So, I'm going to add another layer just to kind of see if I can build it up. If not, I'll leave it how it is and then kind of build up with my shape tape. Because I don't have a new concealer, so I just grabbed that. Uh, Anastasia, I love you, but what in tarnation? It's building nice, though. It's building very nice. I will give it that. There we go. I think this is just something that has to be built up. Because now it's actually giving me coverage. Now it is giving me pigment. I'm not looking like I just put a sheer sort of whitish stuff on my face. But I am still probably going to build this up a little bit with my shape tape. Okay. Holy crap. It's not sitting on my skin badly, though. I will definitely give it that. It's sitting very nicely. It's not going into pores. Obviously, that's probably because of the primer as well, but... Ooh. Ooh. That, that just went on so patchy. Oh, my lord. Oh, my, oh, my lord. Now that I'm actually looking at it, it's just... Oh. Ooh. <sighs> I'm gonna do a little bit more, I guess. Uh... This is the most struggle a foundation has given me. I might be taking this back to Ulta, being like, hey, thank you for helping me shade match, but uh, this is slightly terrible. It might be my skin type. That's why certain foundations sit weird on me, but I just, ah. Uh, I don't. The fact that I had to put three layers of foundation on to get it to kind of look even kind of alarmed me because this was 25 bucks, which is not really bad for high-end foundation, but for the fact that I had to put this much on to get any type of coverage and my mama just came down and she's frowning at my face because yeah, it looks, it looks bad, I know. I'm trying. You look like a ghost. I know. You need to wash this shit off. Okay guys, I'm not gonna even try to salvage this. I'm just gonna take it off because this is making my skin look bad and it just feels gross. So I'm gonna go take this off real quick. Okay, so I'm back. I obviously wiped all that off because bleh, I found the receipt. I'm gonna be checking that back tomorrow because that was atrocious. Zero out of 10, would not recommend. Just, I love, love, love Anastasia Beverly Hills, but that was horrendous. So for foundation, I'm just going to use my Kat Von D Lock It Foundation, and this is in the shade Light 44 Cool. This I know I like. I've been using it super teeny tiny amount. This is like the fullest coverage foundation ever. Get this back. There we go. It's like this I know I like. Yes, it's going to look a little gonna go too dark for me sometimes in certain lighting but I swear it is my shade. I compared it to my Makeup Forever and my NYX foundation and it matches pretty dang well so I was just like okay this might actually even be too much. to use my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. And I said this is not a new thing. I use this a lot. I love it. I'm only going to apply a little bit though. I see people paint their faces with this and I'm just like, oh, you do you. And then they blend it out and it looks really awesome. So I'm just like, oh, okay. Everybody's skin is different, so. I question, but I don't slam. Their makeup is banging. Okay, now I actually do have an eyeliner I have not used. 
I am going to be trying the NYX HD Shadow Base. I got this as an option for one of my drugstore only tutorials. So let's see how this goes. This just goes on skin color. Well, skin color for me. I'm just gonna buff it in with this. got the consistency of my shadow insurance kind of that part is itchy don't you hate when you put your foundation on and then your face it's just oh my god yeah it was a struggle that blended out really nice it's well, this will be my conceal my foundation it's not greasy it's not making my concealer or my foundation move which uh, my shadow insurance sometimes does, which is why I have to blend it out with this instead of my finger. But, okay. That's really nice, and that's a lot cheaper than the shadow insurance, but hey. I have got a new setting powder! Yay! It's so cute! Look at this packaging! And this is the Beauty Bakery Flower Setting Powder. I can get this open, I can actually show you the packaging, but this bag is so cute. Oh. Er. Whoop. It's it's gone. But this is the little thing it comes in. I got the translucent. It also comes in a banana shade and a cocoa shade, which makes sense because it is a black owned brand. And therefore, a majority of their products are geared towards those with darker skin tones, so they do cater to all skin tones and types and all of that jazz. I'll leave the little link in the description so you guys can investigate them. Diligently trying to open this. It was sealed very well. I did not suddenly receive a package full of powder because it burst everywhere. Now, this is a loose powder, so be oops this is gonna fly away it got a little shaken when it was shipped to me there we go all right and it is still sealed so it did not get as flying as it sh could have but i'm gonna just dip into the excess that tried to fly away before i actually open it and this is not the company's fault Things happen when shipping happens. Ooh. Also gonna grab the stuff that flew into the lid. Ooh. Oh my goodness. This is so, so soft. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Now my normal setting powder is the next one. This is just, I, I like this. I also really love loose powder, but this, put it on my eyeball. This, this is nice. It's, yeah, it's not really doing anything it shouldn't, but I'm gonna try to get this fully open. I'm going to top some into the lid and then top it onto my face. I really like that it's flying around. Loose powder does that. Eek. But I definitely do really like this. It's really soft and really finely milled, which is the type of powder that I like. I also want to try the Too Faced uh, Born This Way setting powder as well as the Kat Von D one that she came out with, the loose one, just to kind of compare them because I like setting powders. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this is, this is pretty. It's not making my foundation move, which I've actually had some setting powders do. And it's just like that you're defeating the purpose of what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to set the foundation, not make it move. 
also going to try something that I have not done because that is what this is for and it's called baking where you just put a plop of powder underneath your eyes and I'm going to do that with my beauty blender and dip it into the little thing. Now this is to ensure that your concealer doesn't crease everywhere. You know, boop, 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 boop. Dip, dip. I'm also going to do it on my nose because that is an area that likes to be oily. I'm going to close this up and I will dust this off in a moment. Alrighty, since my brows are done, I am, I actually have two eyeshadow palettes to dry and here. I have the Carly Bible palette from BH Cosmetics. I think this is Ulta, it is sold there. Uh, this is an eye and highlighter palette and then I got the new ColourPop from Rosa She Shadow Palette. I will show you both of them. I'll show you this one first. Look how pretty these are. So nice. And then this is gigantic. I have used one of the highlighters in this and it is blinding. But this is very nice. I still have to see the other one but yeah. I'm thinking I'm probably going to do a pink based eye look. No. I'm going to dust this off first. It has pretty much just gone into my skin. That is nice. Yeah, I will definitely be repurchasing this setting powder. It is lovely. I am going to start. Let's see. I'm going to use this. I'm going to start with the Carly Bible palette and now these shades aren't named but I am going to grab this cream shade and kind of just put it on my lid as a base that way I have kind of something to work with and this does come with the huge huge mirror. Also the palette in general is huge. I'm just going to put this on my lid, just kind of as a base, just to give me something to work with. That is nice. This is very buttery. I am also going to grab this sort of mauve shade and pop that into my crease. Also, these are very pigmented so far and they don't have buckets of fallout which is nice because I hate when I put my brush in the shadow and then it's just like a cloud of dust everywhere. It is irksome. And this is really pretty. You could definitely see makeup artists grabbing this for bridal clients because pretty much all the tones in this are very natural and just very nice and subtle. There is a little bit of kickback but that is what happens with pretty much all shadows, but it is not in excess. And these are very, very easy to blend. Very easy. And I feel like this is a different formula from the other BH shadows, because I do own a few other BH palettes. Uh, the Take Me To Brazil palette is one that I could kind of compare, because it's mainly matte shadows, so comparable, but these seem more pigmented. Hold it a little bit and do do do. Also putting it on the outer little V part because I blended them to the void. This is pretty. Now, I may need to use my finger, but we will see. I am going to try to take a little flat, it's actually a concealer brush, and grab this really, really, really pretty pink shade. Sometimes shimmer shadows don't want to work on brushes and you have to use your finger, which is fine. I have experienced this before. But I'm gonna just kind of put that... No, it's actually working. Okay. I'm gonna put that on my lid. I'm gonna try my finger and see if it does anything different. Oh yeah, that's working much better. Whoops! Things that happen when you use your fingers. 
I'm just going to use this to sort of blend it, but... I'm going to use my finger to put this on. Which, like I said, this does not bother me. It would only bother me if I was doing it on a client that I didn't really personally know, because it's just like, hey, let me just put your fi my fingers all over your face. For my brow bone highlight, I am going in with, now these shades are actually named, I'm going in with this one, which is called Dainty, and I'm going to grab that on my little, keeps wanting to fall, grab it on my little baby fluffy brush and put that on my brow bone. Now, some of the shimmer shadows in this palette are more for kind of highlighting and less for actually the lid from what I'm seeing because I did swatch this. They are not very intense, however, they are still nice. Ooh. There we go, that's actually kind of coming through. And then for the inner corner, I am going to grab this shade which is called Chick, which is kind of funny because it's like a champagne sort of yellowy color. Now that is very pigmented. It's going to be very happy. A bit a little more dimension. Um, let's see here. Not this one or this one. Kind of also swatching it on my hand. I'm gonna take this very, very lightly, and that is Damsel. I believe that's Damsel. Yep, that's Damsel. I'm gonna take it very lightly, top off the excess, and just smudge that into crease for a little bit of darkening. Just a little bit. I'm not gonna go bonkers. I still want this to be kind of light, but I want a little depth. Alright. Half tempted to grab this dark purple and smudge it under my lower lash line, but I want to actually use my letter. Alright, I'm gonna keep the Carly Bible palette out, but I'll put that away. Now, I have two different eyeliners to try. One I've used once, and that is for my lower lash line. That is the NYX Collection Noir Skinny Black Liner. It's super, 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 super skinny. Like, itty bitty. It's very good for the waterline, but... It does vaguely feel like you're poking yourself in the eye when you use this, so do be careful, but... It does what it needs to do. And then the other one is for my top lid. And this is the Wet n Wild Mega Liner Liquid Eyeliner. It is a little pop eyeliner. The brush. Now this one I'm going to be careful. I'm going to try to do my usual wing. So I feel my face. Smudge it all over creation. It does start down really fast though. Yep, okay. Definitely do like this. But I'm gonna do contour first. I don't really have any new contours, so I'm just going to use. One of my usuals, and that's the Feline Fancy palette from Sugar Pill. And I'm gonna grab the shade Text Me. Now, I am going in again with the Carly Bible palette. Ugh. And I am gonna use the pink one, and it's one I've actually used before. This is one of the highlighters. Please, please be light handed with these. They are blinding and pigmented. Unless you actually want to signal a spaceship. 
Like, I, I, will, I will show you. Whoop! Oh! Yeah. And... I'm not usually heavy-handed. There we go. I'm usually horribly heavy-handed. But... Again, be, be, be gentle. Because otherwise you will signal space. Which is not a bad thing, but... I don't really know how glowy any of y'all want to be. Okay. And turn it down. Yeah, I thought my Anastasia ones were blinding. This is on some next level. I was gonna use this sort of bronzy highlighter for bronzer, but it's very gold toned, so. I do have my blush that I have a new blush brush to try, and this is from Eco Tools. This is actually a powder brush, but I'm gonna give it a whirl with my Essence Blush Up Powder Blush in the shade Pinky Flow. I'm gonna see how this applies things. And I said this is a powder brush, but I like big, floofy, thick brushes for my blush. Um, hello. Essence blush, I know you usually apply a little. It's applying, it's just a lot lighter than I usually do. So maybe this is not great for a blush brush, but this is very soft. I'm not writing it off as a brush in general, because it is very nice. But as for a blush brush, probably not the best choice. I'm trying. It does make it very subtle. You do have to apply a lot. This is not the most pigmented blush in the world, mind you. That belongs to either my Tarte one or my huge BH Cosmetics palette that I generally keep in my kit. But it does apply it for a very pretty sort of natural looking flush. I will definitely give this brush that. I, I, and I also really love how soft this is. Like, this is lovely. Also, I should mention that Eco Tools. Like, all of our stuff is completely cruelty free, like, all of our hair brushes are synthetic and not plucked from the butts of horses or something. And we got two more things, and then we are done. And that is mascara and lipstick. Now I'm just using my normal mega plump mascara from Wet n Wild, because I don't have any mascara. I didn't need to get a new mascara soon, possibly, because... Mascara goes bad pretty quickly, despite the fact of I think it lasts for like six months, but like for some reason it always gets really clumpy before then. So it's more like every three months or every two months. Which is why I most of the time don't really buy super expensive mascara because I'm just gonna have to pitch it. So yeah. For lip color, I have shown this, but I've never actually worn it. And it is the Wet n Wild Mega Last Liquid Catsuit Matte Lipstick in the shade Pink Really Hard. I thought it would go with this look. It was the only pink lipstick I haven't really like tried. This is also a peachy pink, which works with the eyes. Hmm. This is applying a little streaky. I don't know if it's a shade or me. I do not like this. I am going to wipe this off and put on a different lipstick. Okay, instead of a lipstick, the closest one that I could find that I have not used for this look is the e.l.f. Shimmer Lip Gloss, and this is in the shade Inspire. Now this is going to be a bit of a tint, because the other closest one I had that would work is my NARS Satin Lip Pencil in Rikujin, but I've used that a million times. This tastes like cake batter. And this is a gloss, so... Ooh! It's going to be sheer, but... This is pretty. It gives a subtle tint. And it's not cakey, 
it's not sticky, which is shocking, because lip gloss in general, no, no, this tastes like, you know those, uh, strawberry shortcake good humor bars, that's what this tastes like, I was getting cake, but now I'm getting strawberry shortcake. Maybe cruelty free, but it is not edible. Yeah, this is pretty. I like this. And the cool part about this, this was like two dollars, so definitely, definitely like this. I'm gonna get a couple more shades because this is nice. But I'm gonna put a wig on, and then I'm gonna give you my opinion on everything. Okay, I popped on the pink wig that I used for Cupid, which. Y'all can see, it is longer, it is very fluffy, and very pretty. I just kind of pinned the bangs back so they weren't like eating my face. But, overall, through all of this ones I would definitely recommend are the e.l.f. Shimmer Lip Gloss, the Carly Bible Palette, the Beauty Bakery flower setting powder because of course the Kat Von D Locket foundation I'd recommend this too for a drugstore primer because I think it was around seven ish don't quote me on that I'll put it on the screen if I'm wrong versus like 20 bucks for all the high-end ones but this is nice this is really nice this I don't know if I'd recommend I do like how the matte shadows blended I don't have enough experience with ColourPop shadows to give you guys a full opinion, but I do like this. It is pretty. It was a good price. Unfortunately, it's sold out at the moment. Sorry. But whatever comes back in stock, just get your paws on it. This I would recommend. It is a very good liquid liner, and this is about two bucks. So, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah, because the highlighter is from the Kylie Bible palette, and primer I've already used, other stuff I've already used. And the products I would not recommend are the, I'm gonna pop a picture because I put it upstairs back in the Ulta bag with a receipt, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick Foundation. Blech. And I would also not recommend the Mega Last Liquid Catsuit Matte Lipstick from Wet n Wild, specifically in the shade Pink Really Hard. So far the other shades have been good, but this is just a streaky, gross, patchy mess and just it's it's not worth the five dollars that it costs. Works for you, congrats. Same with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Foundation, because like I said, I love that brand. That made me sad. But not everything works for everybody. Do not take offense to this or as me slamming the brands, because as I said, I use a lot of Wet n Wild products and I use a lot of Anastasia Beverly Hills products. They kind of own my soul with their glow kits, but it did not work for me this time. But Anyway, I am going to de makeup and probably play some more to Warcraft. Maybe sleep. I don't know. But I love you guys dearly. All of the helpful links in the description below, as usual, as well as all the products I used in case you missed it. And feel free to subscribe if you like my shenanigans. But I love you guys dearly, and I will see you next time.